Welcome back to the swamp my friends and welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true paranormal horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a Bigfoot doing a backflip over a train or a ghost haunting you while you're trying to get some epic kills in Fortnite, be sure to submit your stories at SwampDweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Now, with all jokes aside, let's jump into these creepy, strange, and downright allegedly true horror stories with paranormal happenings. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, I don't know about you, but I have definitely benefited from having somebody to talk to from time to time. Whether it's on a weekly basis, or bi-weekly basis, or even a daily basis from time to time, I feel like it's extremely valuable to have this resource at your hands at any time. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Again, I love BetterHelp. I love having the option to talk to a therapist when I need to have it. And I love the option of being able to pull back when I don't think I need it as much. It's always nice to have that helping hand, somebody to talk to, but it is nice to not have to feel obligated to do it. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash swamped today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash swamped. My best friend's mother passed away from a degenerative disease in their home about a year ago. Two weeks ago, I moved to this lovely neighborhood with my friend and her fiancé. My best friend and her fiancé are both into the occult and are Satanist. While I don't share their beliefs, I don't really judge them for it. I'm not particularly religious or spiritual myself. However, their home is quite different from what I'm used to. It's a half a million dollar home, but the blinds are always shut. and There are spooky paintings, statues of Lucifer and pentagrams around the house. It's a beautiful house, but the decoration is, uh, questionable. My room is pink and frilly, filled with stuffed animals. I wonder why I moved here. However, I am lucky enough to not pay any rent, and I have found a well-paying job that allows me to pursue my legal career. My host has been very welcoming and kind enough to open the doors of her home to me, so I cannot complain. But I do feel a little bit concerned. My television, which I received as a hand-me-down, was a faulty LED-lighted one. As a result, it sometimes displays dark and bright screams randomly during certain scenes. One night, the TV turned on by itself at 2.16am. At first, I thought I had accidentally rolled over the remote. But when I checked, I realized the remote was on the desk next to me. The television was open on Hulu on her late mother's account, which I thought was a little weird, but not too weird. A small mirror in the shower fell face down the following day, but it somehow didn't break. I had not heard it fall, and I wasn't using the shower when it fell. I woke up yesterday at 10.30pm, right when I was falling asleep. I got a drunk phone call from my sibling, and immediately I smelled something strange, almost like roadkill. It was a strong smell and my face scrunched, but just for a few minutes until I slept. I thought maybe her fiancé was cooking something and the stench permeated my room. I asked this morning if they had cooked something that late and they both said no. I have also been noticeably more angry and exhausted, but then again moving was a very draining thing. I commented on the strange things going on with my best friend. She joked and said it may have just been her mother welcoming me home. I, I did know her mother and had a good relationship with her. Then, when I started to mention more of these events, she stayed quiet. Upon further poking and prodding, it was discovered that the alignment of two mirrors in my bedroom created a portal. I conducted a cleansing and the incense was used to hopefully remove any negative energy. 
I'm not inclined towards any religious or spiritual beliefs, but I'm experiencing something very unusual. I would love to know everybody's thoughts in the comments about what I might be possibly experiencing. Let's get right into the story. I was about 9 years old when I started attending an elementary school my mom attended when she was younger. It was a massive school with 4 floors and a playground out front. I only went to a classroom on the first floor. We had a weird thing. We had one teacher all year but they taught different subjects throughout the day. Anyway, I needed to use the restroom so I asked my teacher to go. She said that I could so I got up and went to the bathroom. It's essential to know that in this story that there are light motion detectors throughout the school. As I walked down the hallway, one of the lights shut off and I got a little freaked out because I was like 9 and scared of the dark. I quickly walked down the hallway and it flashed back on. I felt relieved and went to the bathroom. After I was done, I left the bathroom and the light was off again. I was about to rush back down the hallway when suddenly it turned on. No one was even there. I could see the whole hallway from where I was standing. It was just me. I got freaked out when I suddenly saw it shut back off and there was this vast black figure. Except it wasn't standing. It was slithering around the floor like a snake. I freaked out and ran straight to my classroom, never looking back for a second. I left that school when I was 11 and a few years later it was demolished and turned into apartments. I remember kids talking about it being built on a burial ground. And I don't know if that's true. I did learn one thing though. Never build on a burial ground. So, I live in northern Minnesota. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. We don't have any close neighbors and we're surrounded by woods. We lived out here most of my life and usually just hear wildlife and other stuff of that sort. But recently, I've heard something that was like a person. Or maybe something similar to a person. You know how you can tell the footsteps by something if it's on four legs or two? Well, this thing is definitely on two. I have had three occasions where who or whatever it was was right outside, just watching me. The first one was not so bad. It was outside at about 1am. Me and a couple of buddies were just hanging out. We were talking, having some fun, you know, just kind of shooting the shit when we heard someone walking around in the woods. Keep in mind, my woods are low-key really scary, and like I said, we're out in the very middle of nowhere. It's thick, dark, and absolutely blinding out there. So who would be in the woods at 1am? We call out to them, but we get no answer and the footsteps just faded into the darkness deeper into the woods at a walking speed. But it was incredibly casual. The second time is when things actually start to get weird. Me and another one of my friends were out in my shed smoking a little bit of green. And before anybody says anything crazy, trust me, I've done this plenty of times. It doesn't suddenly make you see or hear things that's not there. We were sitting there, laughing hella hard about something that I don't remember. But then all of a sudden, we hear a loud thud on the roof. We both just go dead silent because that was startling. Then we listen to it again and we just wait and it happens over and over like somebody or something is walking on the roof. It sounded like slow, dragging footsteps. I'm not sure what it was, but it was some super strange noise. It kept going on for at least six, maybe even seven stomp drag steps before it stopped. Both my brother and I were scared and didn't know what to do. We sat there silently for quite some time, and then I nervously laughed because I was just so confused. Later we ran outside the shed but we couldn't find anything on the roof. It all just happened so fast and it was just after sunset, so there was still just a little bit of light, but there was nothing on the roof that we could visibly see. On the third occasion it was around 11pm and I was alone. I must admit I do enjoy smoking ganja. But I can assure you again that it doesn't cause hallucinations, at least not in my case. I was inside my house at this time and I opened my first floor window which leads out to a small brick patio at ground level. I was just about to light up a cigarette when I heard some shuffling noise coming from the grass. Now keep in mind it was pitch black outside and the sound made me feel uneasy. 
Suddenly, I felt the urge to turn off the light and step back, so I did. The shuffling sound hits the brick patio, and I'm not kidding, it sounds precisely like dress shoes or high heels. The footsteps just had that clicking noise, you know? They slowly approached my wide open window. I'm waiting for something to happen when the clicking stops outside of my window just by a few inches. I was just waiting for something creepy to peek in and look at me, but nothing ever happened. I sat there for at least 15, 20, maybe even 30 seconds, silently looking at the door, getting ready to run. Then I hear the dress shoes turn around and slowly walk away from where they came and back into the grass. And you know where they went? Straight into the woods. I reside in Yorkshire, England, and if there are any other residents from the same area, you might be familiar with the Nostel Priory. It is a vast estate constructed during the 12th century to serve as a monastery for monks. The property has been under the ownership of several families throughout the years. To access the estate, you need to cross a bridge. Once you have passed the estate, you will come across a tall wall that surrounds the entire priory. On the side closest to the bridge, you will find a small, old wooden door. The main gates are located at the far end, away from the bridge. This was the route that my dad's great uncle used to take on the way to get to and from work. One night while working late, he was driving home on his motorbike in the early morning hours, between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. He shared with my dad that the streets were empty and absolutely dead silent. As he descended from the bridge, he noticed a man dressed in monk clothing emerging from a small door in the wall, slowly crossing the road. While he was riding his bike, he suddenly swerved to avoid hitting the man. However, this abrupt move caused him to lose balance and fall off his bike. When he got back up, he realized the man had disappeared and dissipated right in front of his eyes. He was left alone in the dark. This experience frightened him greatly, and he tells it every so often, but you can tell by the fear and emotion in his voice and eyes that he is not telling a tall tale. I want to preface this by saying I'm a hard skeptic. It's not that I'm against the idea of paranormal activity, but more that I prefer to go through every possible scenario in my head before resorting to that, and for example, Seeing photo orbs as dust on a lens or actual ghost sightings as manifestations of mental illness or hallucination. If there's a rational, real-world explanation, I will probably believe it over something more magical. Anyway, this series of events happened in my old house about 8 years ago now. It was 2014 and I was 15 years old. I was going through a lot at the time with bullying at school, which combined with general teenage angst, meant that I was not in the best headspace. I thought the idea of the paranormal was cool, albeit unlikely. So when a friend suggested playing around with a homemade Ouija board, I decided to give it a go. It, I mean, it didn't do anything, right? It was just a paper with letters drawn. Of course it didn't work, why would it? Recess ended and I just went on with my life. I have no idea if it was just a coincidence or if this was some sort of catalyst but I thought I would include it for detail's sake. But after that, weird things started happening. I think the first was the light. I was laying in bed with my mom late one night. Yes, I know, probably weird for a 14 year old to share a bed with his mother, but I had severe anxiety. And needless to say, obviously I like my privacy now, but that night I felt like I needed comfort and she had just fallen asleep. I was still awake staring at the wall ahead of me. From where I was lying, I could see the open ensuite door ahead of me with the window to the left. Suddenly some light appeared. It was perfectly round, almost like someone was shining a flashlight in through the window. However, it was odd that it had no distortion. Usually you'd expect a light shown at an angle to be elongated, but this one, it just wasn't. To make it even stranger, it was half over the ensuite door, and despite this, there was no distortion of the light going into the bathroom itself. I hovered there for just a few seconds until I quickly shoved my mom and asked her if she could see the light too. She woke up, looked around, and said no, and sure enough, the light was gone. She told me to sleep when it appeared again in the same spot. This time she saw it because she shut up mid-sentence and just stared. Once again, after only a few seconds, it disappeared and didn't reappear again. 
We were both pretty freaked out at this point because there was no way someone could be shining a light through the window. The angle was way off, and we had the curtains drawn. It was just this strange, hovering white light. Eventually, we did end up going back to sleep because there was nothing we could exactly do about weird orbs appearing in the middle of the night. Next, the TV started flickering by themselves. They'd turn on randomly, and sometimes we'd wake up to find them with a pure white screen. No noise, no distortion, just totally white. This could easily be dismissed as faulty wiring, potentially. I know little about TVs, but technology isn't the most reliable sometimes. This is when I first experienced sleep paralysis. I woke up lying in my bed, on my side, and saw a figure in the corner. Noticing I couldn't move, I saw the figure come closer, run its hands down my spine, rustle the curtains before I could finally wake up. I already knew about sleep paralysis as a phenomenon and recognized it immediately after I woke up. It's got a pretty solid scientific explanation, so I didn't think too much of it. I was probably just overly tired. Until now, these events seemed pretty unrelated, and I didn't worry too much about them. Things very suddenly took a turn for the worse, though. One night, I got up to go to the bathroom, and upon lifting the toilet lid, I found it just full of blood. I was pretty tired, and sorry, this is quite gross. I just figured my mom had her time of the month and, for some reason, used my bathroom and forgot to flush. I went to bed. The following day, when I made a passive-aggressive remark about flushing her blood, she told me that it was nowhere near that time of the month for her. That was pretty damn weird, but like the horror movie protagonist, I proved myself to be thus far rational, so I chalked it up to imagining things. Until, of course, blood started to appear in other places in the house. At that point, we had nine indoor cats, so our first thought when waking up to drops of blood on the walls and the floor was that one of them must be injured. We checked all of them over, but there were no injuries we could see. And to make it even stranger, the blood was only in a few select spots, and they didn't form a trail. On the wall, the blood drops were far too high for any cat to reach. We had nine-foot ceilings, and didn't have any drip marks. It looked as if someone had put a dollop of red paint on the wall, and it dried immediately. But we could definitely tell it was blood. At the same time, we started finding strange water in the drawers. My mom noticed one night that there was water spilled on top of her bedside table, and upon opening it, she found all of her clothes inside totally soaked through. The liquid had no odor, it wasn't sticky, and was completely clear. Anyone who owns cats know that cat pee has a very distinct smell, so that was out of the question. Plus, her drawers were made of thick wood, so the chances of water being able to soak through enough to actually drench the clothes inside was almost impossible. At this point, we started to think that something weird was going on. From there, things escalated. Items would go missing only to appear again days later, and cats were constantly on edge and freaked out for no seemingly good reason. They stare at stuff on the walls, then bolt away and were generally unsettled to an unusual degree. Things would fall off shelves, the liquid and blood kept showing up to the point to where it became a regular occurrence, and finally, we just decided to move. I think whatever it was in the house didn't like that we were leaving. One night, I had this horrible sinking feeling. It was just this sensation of being watched, like I, I can't describe it. It was like this pressure and uneasiness, like something just wasn't correct. I decided I'd sleep with my lamp that night to ease my stress. When I woke up, I was in a sleep paralysis fit, and much worse than the last time. It was auditory, visual, and had sensory overload. I won't go into too many details because this post isn't about sleep paralysis, but the gist of it was a demon talking to me on my chest until I saw the infamous hat man, at which point the demon expressed fear and jumped off of me. The sleep paralysis then ended. Side note, I have had many others like this, but I had never ever heard of the hat man before in my entire life, and this was the first time I actually saw the hat man. I only recognized him months later when I saw someone's art depicting him as their own sleep paralysis demon, and I started doing my research. This shook me up pretty badly, I'm not gonna lie. But again, sleep paralysis is linked to REM sleep, and maybe I just jinxed myself into experiencing it through that uneasy feeling from earlier. I only really started to feel unsafe after this next event, and it's the one that requires the most description. I was fast asleep and it was around 4am. 
I found out later that my stepdad had just left for work about 20 minutes before this, and my mom was awake in bed because of that. I, however, did not wake up. All I remember is being woken by something. It wasn't the natural way one was roused from sleep usually. It felt jarring and unnatural, and when I opened my eyes, I screamed. It was the most terrifying sensation I'd ever felt. Anyone in a life-threatening situation can definitely attest to this. They could probably understand that sudden, just impact of dread and terror, the immediate recognition that something was desperately wrong. It was like my brain immediately kicked into survival mode, despite not fully comprehending what was happening. I have never experienced night terrors, nor have I ever woken up screaming. This was different from sleep paralysis too, because I could move as soon as I woke up and sat in bed. I must reiterate that I have never felt this kind of fear before, and I've suffered from anxiety for most of my life. When I opened up my eyes, I saw a shadowy figure standing over me, but I was immediately distracted by a massive crash of everything falling off my wall shelf. I think I had a few trinket boxes and figurines up there and a jar full of little crystals I had had for ages. All of that shattered on the floor. My mom immediately panicked into my room only to find me sitting in the bed with this mess on the floor. When she asked what was wrong, I couldn't even answer. I just said I thought someone was in my room, but I must have just heard the shelf items falling and reacted to that. My mom looked confused and said, no, she'd been awake and I had screamed before the crash. There was absolutely no way the collision had woken me up. We examined the shelf and started trying to piece together what had happened. Now, the shelf was only on some boards and wasn't nailed to the wall. This meant that if someone applied pressure to the front or the sides, it could tilt forward. Initially, we thought that maybe one of the cats had jumped up and stepped in the wrong spot, causing everything to slide off. However, we quickly did realize that this would have been impossible as the shelf had yet to be moved from its spot, and the position where everything fell from to a line where the things dropped and landed wouldn't have made any sense for them to have fallen forward. It's like somebody would have had to have picked it up and thrown it. That still didn't explain why I screamed before the crash or the dread I felt upon waking up and feeling like something was in the room with me. Thinking back on it, I realized that when I opened my eyes and screamed, I could remember in my days seeing the items on my shelf be swiped by someone. We moved quickly after and haven't experienced anything like that ever since. The TVs that used to turn off by themselves and flicker on no longer do that. The cats have settled and have never been that crazy and I haven't experienced any sleep paralysis since. Was this paranormal? Some angry spirit? A poltergeist? I have no idea. It's one of those things that people will probably look at and say, surely there's a reasonable explanation. Maybe the author is just exaggerating or lying, or skipping important details, because I know that's how I would react. It's how I respond to these kinds of stories, but I guess paranormal experiences are just something that you have to experience yourself to truly believe. I'm fascinated by sleep paralysis and the collective images we experience during it. The act itself is easily explained by REM sleep patterns, but not what we experience within it. Is sleep paralysis something more than a funky brain pattern? I damn wish I knew. It all began when I was growing up in Georgia. My family had moved there when I was young so my sister and I could be closer to our grandparents nearby. We lived with them for about a year as our new home was being built. We decided to make a peaceful gated community on a spare plot of land, and when it was all finished, it felt like the perfect home for us at the time. At least according to my mom and dad, anyway. My mom worked the day shift at the local hospital, and my father was day trading at the time, so he was home pretty much all the time. He was very much into horror back then, and there was no limit to the things we would watch. Anything from paranormal activity to the exorcist or those ghost hunting shows was fair game. One night he fell asleep watching one of these shows. I believe he later said it was called Paranormal State. The show followed this group of college-aged amateur ghost hunters traveling the country attempting to solve these ghost cases. In this episode, my dad fell asleep. They were reading passages from an ancient book they found in this house that they were investigating. Then, they started reading names in Old Latin. My dad said it was shortly after this part that a low, guttural, gravelly voice echoed in the bonus room that was our TV room. 
and shook him away. The voice called his name, Phil, in such a tone that it seemed to shake the whole house. My dad then decided he had had enough for the night and since it was late he brushed it off as a bad dream and went downstairs to bed. He thought, huh, maybe I just freaked myself out, you know, we all do that sometimes. But it was no dream and my family's nightmare had just begun. For almost two years from that night onward, we started noticing bizarre and terrifying occurrences, usually around just after midnight. My mom and dad repeatedly heard the same low voice calling my dad's name at night, each time getting louder and louder until it suddenly stopped always around 3 a.m. each night. My mom would wake up in the middle of the night with the feeling of scratches on her legs, only to wake up the following day and find red marks on her. It was always in sets of threes. We would also have your typical poltergeist activity. Pots being knocked over, doors closing by themselves, utensils flying out of the sink, etc. But the absolute worst of it was directed at me. I had always had a special connection to the spiritual world since I was just a baby, and I attribute that to almost suffocating when I was born and nearly being special needs for the rest of my life if I didn't wake up when I did. I saw many things while I lived in that house floating colored lights outside my window and a creature in my bathroom that resembled what I could only describe as a house brownie. But nothing compared to what I would experience from this, this absolute evil thing that entered my once peaceful home. Once I get into that, for context, you must first understand the layout of the upstairs portion of my house. From the front door, two sets of stairs are located to the right leading upstairs. From the top of the stairs to the right was my dad's office where he worked and across from that door was a long open hallway called a catwalk. There's a balcony on both sides with no walls so that you can overlook the living room from there. Once you walked down the catwalk to the left wall was my room and my sister and I's bathroom was directly across. Walking a little further was my sister's room on the right and at the end of the hall right next to her door was the laundry room. And finally the bonus room entrance was directly across from her door. We can get on with the story now that you understand the layout. For many nights I experienced severely disturbing paranormal activity. My door would shake violently every single night. My lights would flicker, I'd hear scratching along the walls and I'd listen to low deep heavy breathing outside the door each and every single night. It got so bad that my mom procured some St. John's charms to protect from our local church preventing it from getting into my room. So I was relieved to have them. Unfortunately, that only made the activity outside of our rooms even more unsettling. We got so desperate to make it end, we called a medium to come and cleanse the house. She walked up to the bonus room and said that this was the source of the evil energy, almost as if it had a portal that had been torn there. I think that night my dad was watching that show. Whatever they read from that book opened up a portal in that room that night. She gave us some sage, and we smudged the house. Then, as though it never happened, the activity suddenly ceased. Finally, we thought that this was all over, but we couldn't be more wrong. A few months passed without a single thing happening, and then, on Halloween of all nights, it decided to show itself. My aunt, uncle, and cousin Mike were visiting for the weekend, and after a fun night of trick-or-treating, we kids decided to play blackout tag. For those unfamiliar with this game, everyone turns off all the lights in the house and each person is given a flashlight. Those who aren't hide, and the ones who search for them have their flashlight. My parents and my relatives were all on the back porch so they didn't mind. My sister and I hid upstairs in my father's office as Mike looked around for us. He crawled up the stairs and found us rather quickly and we couldn't stop giggling. When he opened the door, we screamed with excitement as he had finally found us and we were having such a good time. While talking to Mike, he shone his light across the catwalk to the laundry room. That's, that's when we saw it. I can't even begin to explain how terrified I was. I was welling up with tears just writing about this. I have never been so scared before or since this experience. We saw something when that light hit the laundry room door. It was like black smoke billowed out from the bonus room. Following closely behind this smoke, we sat on the top of the stairs as we watched this tall, lightless figure float out from the room. It had no visible features, but it looked as though it wore a long, black cloak and had absurdly long limbs. The head had no visible components either, save for two long horns protruding menacingly from its, what I guess you could say, 
eyes. They were glowing red, like deep, dark embers. Naturally, scared out of our mind at what we were looking at, we tripped over each other as we scrambled down the stairs to get to our parents. When we finally got to them and got them to come inside to take a look, it had vanished. My aunt and uncle thought we were trying to scare them, but my mom and dad knew my sister and I wouldn't lie about something like this. They immediately called over a pastor to exercise and bless the house. From that day on, everything was finally, actually peaceful. We moved out a couple of years after that to somewhere much colder to be with our extended family, but the memory of the house still haunts me to this day. My sister and cousin, they don't really recall much, probably having blacked it out due to the intense trauma, but I still remember and I'll never be able to forget it. I have since grown and lived in quite a few ghost-free homes. I have lived in many houses with positive energy, negative energy, etc. But God is my witness, nothing as traumatizing, terrifying, and as unexplainable as that house I grew up in. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true paranormal horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. If you enjoyed these stories and want to hear more stories like this, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications so you don't miss a new episode as I upload them multiple times a week on all things natural and supernatural. If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. It would be really great if you could give us a 5 star rating on those platforms as it helps us grow over there. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it be an unexplainable paranormal story, some sort of encounter with a cryptic creature, or just something happening in the great outdoors, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Definitely let me know in the comments what story was your favorite tonight. I love seeing your reviews. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video. Be sure to join me over on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Instagram, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you soon.